The Starship space vehicle must travel to the Moon or Mars. No matter the amount of money that will be drained in the project, there is no going back because everyone all over the world, including the government, already knows that Elon Musk and SpaceX are building a massive rocket that will travel to space. Elon and his company won't stand a chance to be a coward in the face of the world on this project. We already know that Musk has never relented on any projects he's ever started. He has built several other projects that have been a source of massive benefits to the United States and the world. Taking, for instance, the well-detailed Tesla cars, the Starlink network, the Boring Company, and the Starship, Moon, and Mars project. Even though the A-list billionaire Elon Musk has been doing his best to make humans a multi-planetary species and colonize Mars, the challenges encountered while building and testing the Starship have become a bone in the ass. But Elon Musk cannot back off at this stage, no matter the kind of devil or call it a nightmare the Starship project has to face. The only hope for SpaceX is to keep grinding until the Starship finally lands on Mars, just as Elon has been promising the world. Amidst all of the challenges coming up, the Starship, including failure due to static fire test of 33 Raptor engine, reinforcing strength to the launch pad so that it can withstand vibration, and many others, most importantly the heat shield tiles has been the worst challenge ever. But guess what? The hexagonal thermal heat protection tiles keep failing off anytime SpaceX fires up the Starship for testing. This has happened many times, and it's been a series of hectic challenges for the company, but there is a solution right now. Let's talk more about the ultimate breakthrough suggested to SpaceX to stop the heat tiles from falling off any time the Starship vibrates severely during liftoff. The Starship will travel at extremely high speeds when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere from orbit. These speeds will be in the range of 7 to 8 kilometers per second. For the Starship to land safely on Earth, the rocket's speed must be reduced to a point where it can activate its engine in the opposite direction of the high speed. This will reduce the amount of kinetic energy by converting it into thermal energy. The Starship's average kinetic energy while re-entering the Earth's atmosphere is approximately 13 megajoules per kilogram. This is very high compared to the energy of explosives like TNT, which is approximately 4 megajoules per kilogram, meaning that the Starship will have sufficient energy to vaporize almost anything that you can think of. The good news is that the vast majority of the energy created during re-entry is absorbed by the atmosphere, and at the same time the rocket itself also absorbs some amount of that energy. The question now is, how does this kinetic energy become heat energy? You will discover that the answer to this question is atmospheric drag or friction in many different sources. While this is true for aircraft that travel at supersonic speeds, it is not true for space rockets that fly at hypersonic e-speeds. When a rocket re-enters the atmosphere of the Earth at hypersonic speeds, it is possible that a high heat which will burn into flames will be around it. The speed of the air particles and that of the rockets all reach the same velocity, which results in massive pressure and very high temperature, leading to a shock wave formation. The atmosphere can't get out of the way easily. The shock wave is where the majority of the re-entry heat is generated. However, even a negligible amount, which ranges from about 1-5%, to is enough for a rocket to endure during re-entry to generate a temperature that can reach up to 1600 degrees Celsius. This must be avoided at all costs to protect the sensitive instruments and crew currently on board the Starship. It is necessary for the heat shields to activate so that they can either radiate or absorb the re-entry heat and maintain the usual conditions inside the Starship rocket. Because of this, SpaceX uses an ablative heat shield, absorbing the energy as it heats up and vaporizes the energy around the rocket. But the problem with ablative heat shields is that they burn up. They need to be replaced, which doesn't work if you want to relaunch a Starship within an hour of landing, as SpaceX intends to do with the Starship. Ceramic thermal protection tiles are used instead of traditional ablative material to shield the Starship from the heat of re-entry. This is done so that the spacecraft may be reused more quickly. These tiles, much like those used on the space shuttle, are incredibly thin, lightweight and delicate. But the crucial problem is that these tiles would shatter and fall off when the Starship is fired up. They would leave the ship with a great deal of force. There are around 25,000 thermal protection tiles on each Starship, and the manufacture of these tiles is a time-consuming process. The bakery that SpaceX uses to produce heat shield tiles is located in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and production of these tiles will soon commence in Starbase. If SpaceX wants to be able to fully outfit many Starships, it will need to find out how to reliably produce more durable thermal tiles and install them. 
SpaceX is doing exactly that, which is why they manufacture a tiny hue variation in the tiles to experiment with. What makes the Starship different from other rockets is that SpaceX mounted the heat shield directly to the thin steel propellant tanks, which is a very risky move. This thin layer also protects the rocket's airframe as a whole. SpaceX engineers seem to have expected the risky move and had their robots fix the problems on the outside. When the Raptor engines on a securely fastened Starship are turned on and fired, the vibrations should be much stronger than when the Starship is in flight. This is because the test stand stops the propulsion forces from doing their job, which is to move the Starship forward. There were a lot of ideas about how SpaceX should stick the tiles to the Starship's body. One of the ideas was that the company should turn the tiles slightly so that the top and the bottom are flat, then make the tiles so that from the inside to the outside, the depth or thickness of the top and the bottom of each tile is 45 degrees. It would also be better for airflow and keep the tiles in the row below from being tossed around. It would also help loose tiles stay in place because they would be partially covered by the tile above them. The tile's airflow would act like a wing, pressing the tile below it against a hull and look more like a dragon. Each tile must be stitched or wired to the skin and the tiles next to it. To speed up the process of putting down tiles, mats of tiles could be sewn together ahead of time and then stuck to the Starship's skin. Or perhaps two kinds of tiles will be used, one that goes over the tiles next to it and one that goes under the tiles next to it. The amount of overlap and overlap would make the connection less tight. The tiles would float slightly because the Starship's skin bends and shakes. The wiring connecting the tiles would be flexible, dampening vibrations and putting the tiles back where they were. There needs to be a way to hold the tile in place so that it does not fall off when the different materials expand and contract. How about a ball and socket fastener, where the socket is a little bigger than the ball and lets it grow, but the ball can't get out of socket? What about a pin system, which is what they're already using? The pins would have the balls on the end fitting into sockets on the back of the tiles. Is this crazy or impossible to do? Elon has fixed the problem with the missing tiles and Starship by putting that white, flexible ceramic fiber mat between the back of the tile and the stainless steel of Starship. That mat is probably something like Cow World 3000, which can be used up to 2800 Fahrenheit without stopping. Even if one or more tiles fall off, that mat will still be stuck to the Starship. An expanding anchor bolt for concrete shows how to make a metal sleeve that can expand and lock a metal bolt to concrete or tile. The problem is that this application is backward. It is fastening the tile to the bolt. A hole in the tile that tapers might work. Another technique is, once the tile is in place over the bolt through the tapered hole, a tapered threaded anchor nut is twisted onto the bolt stud, securing the tile to the ship. The hole and anchor nut are then covered with ceramic putty. A torch is used to cure the clay putty. In the end, something will have to be made so that a pre-made glove or a sleeve can fit over the whole starship. Do you have any effective methods SpaceX can use to always make sure that the heat shield tiles sticks with the Starship? Take a deeper look into the problem found in SpaceX Starships during heat shield testing. Just click on the video.